Fortunately, you don't really have to understand how everything works to be able to take advantage of the fact that it works, uh, which is how come I'm able to use uh, DAS Studio. And since it's now cooperating with Bryce, this is DAS Studio 4.5, I'm, uh, I'm going to use it to load one of its pre-made scenes. Um, I just need to get it to show me the little icons here. Oh, I know, I need to get rid of the figure, that's it. There you go. If I get rid of this figure and then go to All, it now shows me the thing I was looking for. See, I really, really don't have... There we go, this pre-made scene. This is all I needed to do, was get it to. Because it's... The, all the things are applied. I've got hair, I've got clothes, the work. So now, I just go File, Send to Bryce and uh, then I open Bryce back up if the figure is loaded in. So I'm just going to use uh, special effects from the uh, the True Ambience Optimized radial light sources. If you want to know more about that, see the video. But we're just going to use what we know here now. So it's a premium effect. I'm going to set the rays per pixel right down to 4 so we can preview things easily. Engage True Ambience. Select True Ambient Scattering Correction select boost light. I'm going to lower the maximum ray depth to improve render performance because the hair material is the, the main problem because it, of its transparencies. So now we're rendering in Trambience mode but I'm not going to use any direct light so and I'm, I'm not going to use um, at the moment any background. I'm just going to have a black sky. I don't even need the ground in this so I can take that out. It'll improve the rendering performance and if I go into the Skylab I can disable the sunlight. So now you shouldn't see anything. Now I'm going to introduce a light source, so create a radial light and I'm going to just enlarge it and stick it over Vicky's head like that, so that's covering her upper body now. I'm going to edit this light source and it's going to be true ambience optimized. I'm going to use ranged and increase the power on the range because as we covered last time that increases the power of its effect. Use gel procedural and I'm going to reset this material and then I'm going to put a blob in diffuse and ambience turn the ambience up which means I must remember to turn the ambience from grey which is the default to white to drive the effect and I'm going to give it transparent colour and set the transparency and then in the texture components here holding the shift key down I'm going to select the uh, texture that uh, I made in the other video this rainbow texture and I'm going to set, oh it's coming, it's actually got the appropriate uh, scaling, I was wanted it at 20% but I don't want it object cubic, I want it spherical. So that's set the material up, here's the preview, I'm not sure what levels to use yet, I'm going to start with a very high value, no I'm not going to start with a very high value, I'm going to start with a low value and see how it looks and I'm also going to remember that I wanted this ambience here, move the camera in a bit so we're looking at our subject I'm going to change the document setup uh, we'll try one to one so it's just going to re re reduce the number of pixels and uh, I'll, I'll narrow the field of view there and then I'm going to have a look it's going to look a bit noisy right now the thing is to get the effect of the gel transmitting in I don't need the direct light from the true ambience. What I need is, is the bit that's coming from the gel, which means I need to exclude the model. Because at the moment you see it's, it's rather brightly lit. This is all fair enough if I wanted this effect, but I don't. Now if I go into the light lab, this is the key point. Exclude objects. Due to a bug, you can't exclude a group, and Genesis 1 is a group. So if I select this group and render, you shouldn't see any difference. And that's because it doesn't work. However, we can use a bit of logic. Even though we can't exclude the group directly, we could include, and then we just include background, which is something that's not even in this scene. It's always there, which means if we include background, by default, we've just excluded everything else in the scene, which means this will allow me to drive this effect. So I now get the gel colors out of the Trambian's lighting. Now, as you can see, they're looking a bit dim, but we'll do something about that in a second. Alright, if I take the diffuse up, will this improve the intensity? No, because it's excluded. So the way that the gel's working really doesn't rely on the diffuse. It's certainly only working through the ambient channel, which I've already set up. 
I'm going to rotate this round a bit because just to change the the distribution of colour around the scene. So I've got the blue in the centre, this will be in the, the darker of the colours, it'll emphasise the edges. And then uh, what I can do is I can just Control C, Control V, copy the light source and just shrink it slightly so it's not coinciding exactly with the a copy, otherwise it'll interfere with the render. And I can use that to boost the light because it's just adding more light. So if I wanted it brighter still, copy and paste. And uh, the beauty of this is, uh, unlike in a direct lighting situation, it doesn't slow the renderer down. It's, it's just gathering the light anyway, so it's not really interfering with it. You see, it's really creating a lot of problems. We've, been, we've made the light more complex, but uh, it's, it's not slowed things down. Right, I might have a bit of an issue with our eyelashes there, uh, and that's potentially because I've set the ray depth down so far, and so it, it might not be managing to transmit through everything or it might just look like that anyway it's difficult to know but what you've got to consider is with a maximum ray depth of 6 we're looking at um, 40 50 seconds there and if I adjust the render options down to 4 and I still seem to be able to get away with it because we're not focused on our fa on our face there we're down to 10 seconds so the biggest difference is occurring because of all the transparency in the hair and I can't really see behind her head here, the hair's vanishing into the background. What I could do, I suppose, I, I could render like this, I quite like that effect, I could introduce a bit of a background. Oh. In the other tutorial, from the rainbow coloured material, we did create a rainbow um, backdrop using the scene converter. So with the scene converted uh, backdrop here, I, I'll just reduce the quality, I don't need any effect or light, we've got our light sorted, and I'll just add to background and uh, might be a bit bright but we'll see how that looks for an effect so that's introduced a bit of an effect there I'd like to move move it around a bit so if I render in scene I get a preview but I don't get the trambient light lighting but that's not a problem so let's have something like that maybe reduce the intensity a bit so it's not so bright so just to provide a bit of an outline we can see her hair now and uh, there's, there's not much of an overhead in having the the background there. It's just providing some kind of uh, context and uh, allows the hair to be seen. I could probably even get away with it if it was uh, even dimmer. It wouldn't really matter. So it's just a hint of, of something in the background there so we can see that her hair is not, is not just blending completely with the black background. And uh, having set the effect up, the last thing to do is go to Render Options and increase the ray depth and we'll have a look at uh, how punishing the render time is going to be and you can see here it's slowing down the most on the hair and this will get rid of a lot of the noise for us so 24 minutes I'll check the time I'll see uh, often it seems like uh, this is a little bit uh, over the top this estimation when it deals with uh, Trambian's optimized renders and uh, the premium effects but we'll see so I'll just uh, I'll pause the video here and then you can look at the final results when it's done. That then is the completed render. As it happens, the estimation was pretty much spot on and uh, it wasn't too bad actually since I was editing the video in the background too. Uh, using a very similar process to this, I made a, another scene. It looks like this. Uh, a little more straightforward, this one. Using a single uh, radial light. The, the setup for the sky is the same. The ambient channel is not being used in this example but the sky is set to black. There are no other light sources except the radial light. Um, you can see from the render settings Trambian's optimized um, light source needs Trambian's to drive it. Uh, maximum raise per pixel for the, uh, for the reduction of noise. TA scattering correction and boost light once again maximum ray depth of 4. And the light source itself a bit more straightforward. I didn't use a gel. We've got range turned up we're not using any influence features in this, a diffuse of 100. What's creating the effect is this red colour. Because as uh, as I explained in, uh, and showed in the uh, rather long-winded testing video for Trambian's optimized radial lights, you can cause it to um, cap out on the colours. So by choosing 255 red, but 60 green and 15 blue, this, the result of this is when it be get, gets very intense, the light, it's pushing the green and also the blue up towards the maximum setting. So you get a, 
a change in color gradient as well as uh, light intensity and this is how I've got this effect where uh, where we've got deep intense reds in the sort of the shadow regions uh, or shadows where the light's not actually getting and then it's uh, it's pushed and capped towards uh, brighter yellow and then white so that that's a, a lot simpler than the example I uh, I gave you for this uh, video so uh, the choice is yours which one you go for but if you uh, if you go for this one then obviously you're getting a bit more of a a sophisticated effect that's not really very easy to achieve otherwise because uh, to get this kind of quality of lighting and the shadow creation and the uh, transfer of uh, colors this bright area here is also light in the inside of our arm you'd need a, a lot of light sources a conventional light source to create uh, a similar effect so in this case Trambience has really given you an effect in, in, a, in I would think a comparable or short time that you can achieve by simulating it with direct lighting so there you go I hope that's interesting and uh, you'll go on to experiment with this uh, feature.